I'm Danielle Cook and I want to welcome you to Cooking with the Cook Sisters brought to you by the United States Botanic Garden. We're very pleased to be with you regularly to offer online cooking demonstrations and home garden tips. There's nothing better on a cold snowy winter day than a pot of something. Today that something is an Afghan ash, a winter soup that conveniently uses up vegetables from your freezer. We'll also pay a visit to the other cook sister, Adrian. She's in her garden winter pruning her hydrangeas. So let's get cooking. We'll begin making our ash by chopping our foundation vegetables and some cilantro and turning them into a paste. Like soups you may be more familiar with, we're using onion and celery and garlic in our ash. But for our ash, we're going to blend these ingredients. I'm using one can of chopped tomatoes, which I'm going to drain to remove any excess liquid. And now we blend the ingredients. Once the vegetables are completely blended into a nice paste, add three tablespoons of olive oil. The final puree should be thick and fairly smooth and shiny from the oil. Next, we'll heat a little bit of olive oil in our soup pot and add the puree. Let the paste cook over a medium heat until it begins to thicken even more. Sauteing the paste in this manner melds the flavors and brings out the aromatics. And now we'll plop a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste in the center. We'll deepen the flavors of the ash with spices that are traditionally used in Afghani cuisine. Give it a stir and continue cooking until very fragrant and the puree has dried out slightly. Now we'll add our drained chickpeas, our frozen vegetables, and vegetable broth. I'm using a frozen vegetable medley that includes peppers, green beans, zucchini, and carrots, but you could absolutely mix it up to suit your preference. The spinach, however, is non-negotiable. That belongs in every Afghan ash. The term ash refers to a very thick and hearty soup. It's distinct from a stew or more brothy soups. After the ash has simmered to cook the vegetables, we'll add noodles. I'm using traditional ash noodles, which you can get online or at a Middle Eastern grocery store. However, linguine works just fine. With that, I'll add some fresh chopped dill. You can also add some extra broth at this point if it's looking too thick. The noodles will need another five minutes to cook and then you're ready to serve. Just before serving, the final touch on our Afghan ash is a dollop of yogurt and a squeeze of lemon. Now let's go see how Adrienne's managing with her hydrangeas. Hi, I'm Adrienne. Welcome to my garden. Here's my hydrangea. It doesn't look so hot. The deer have been doing all the pruning. That's why the flowers are only at the top. So we got to get to work on this, clean it up, and basically just take apart the various pieces of the hydrangea that we've got here. So let's get started. Let's go around to the other side. I'll show you the structure of the bush. So you can see by the structure of this what's going on. There's the original plant, the old wood, and then there's two outliers on either side. We're going to get rid of those. It's important to know that it's not necessary to prune hydrangeas. Although they certainly don't mind being pruned, they take to it very well. Reasons to prune it might include to shape it or to manage the size of your hydrangea. The timing is important. Summer blooming hydrangeas are pruned in the fall and fall blooming hydrangeas are pruned late winter. This one's a pretty common variety. It's actually a native species, and it blooms starting in August and through September, October with big white blooms. My goal today is to cut back those two outliers and anything that's around it that's also an outlier. 
I think that the shape of the main tree, the original one, is very promising and it's gonna look good once it's freed up. It's taken 15 years to get to this point, so I guess I can't really expect to get it back to where I want it in just one day. I'm gonna be working on this project over the next few weeks when the weather is decent. I hope you'll join me as we keep going on this. We'll see you next week to learn about planting risky beans, and I'll be making a grain bowl with a pot. <laughs>